Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Alex Ventura. I am a photographer based out of Houston, Texas. Uh, I did get a new mic, so hopefully the sound quality is a lot better and hopefully I don't mess up too much through this video, but I'm gonna go ahead and dive right into it. I will be viewing the updated version of Color Map X. This is version 1.1. If this is a new plugin that you haven't heard of yet, I'll go over all the features, how I use it, and some tips. This Photoshop panel is from photographer Nino Batista. You can go to his website, ninobatista.com. Go under NBP Photoshop Plugins, and you can find Color Map X as the first one, or you can see all three plugins that he currently has available. Now, this is a great color exploration tool. Um, if you have a source image you want to get inspired by from their color palettes, you can extract that color palette and apply it to your image. All right, so let's jump right into Photoshop. I already have the panel open. Uh, so the first option you see here is samples. This is how many colors it's going to extract from your source and apply it as a color gradient. Uh, you can go from one sample up to 10 color samples. As you can see here, this one has different 10 different colors. This one has four, so you can vary just depending on your source and how many colors you want to extract. Now you do have the mode of document or file. So file will extract the colors without opening that document. Um, and document, of course, you're gonna have to have that file already open to extract those colors. Now, with this being the updated version, there is a new feature. You go down here to settings, click on that and you can set your default preference. Uh, before it was defaulted always to soft light, but now you have the option of changing blend modes to linear light and overlay. Uh, preference, my preference, and seems like majority of people's preference for gradient maps is gonna be soft light, but you can change the opacity. 100% may be strong, so maybe you find yourself using around 30% a majority of your uh, cut gradient maps. Now you can go ahead and set this as your preference instead of having to do that every single time. I'm going to go ahead and put it back to 100% so I can show you how this tool works on default. You can also change the value of how it shifts the colors and I'll go through that a little bit later so you can understand that better. So let's go ahead and open up a document. I'm gonna grab this image I took in Florida. I've already removed the color gradient maps I've applied, color toning adjustments, I've removed all that. So let's pretend for whatever reason I wanted to apply a purple tone to this image. I already have this as my current palette choice. I'm gonna click on those three dots, apply color gradient. And like I said, 100% may not be what you want so you can, of course, drop that down. Like I said, maybe 30% is what you typically are finding yourself using the opacity value at. So it, overall, it applies that purple color palette that I had extracted and applies it to the image. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and do another analyze a file source. So let's pretend I wanted to add the color palette of these red petals to my image click open and whatever my settings were were the 10 colors it's going to apply uh, it's going to grab 10 color swatches and apply it as a gradient so if i click apply color grading i double click on the preference i can see the properties of that map and you can still go back here and maybe i decided to remove that one so you can go back and change it just like any gradient you've created. Um, I'll go ahead and delete that, apply it again. And you can see right here, this one little band is a little bit darker. You can now, with this updated version, if I click those three dots, I can do sort by luminance and it's gonna shift it back in order. So now, if I apply this color gradient, you can see how that one color shifted over now it's in order by luminance. So if I drop this, go ahead and delete that. Uh, let's say maybe 40%. Now you can see how it applies that 
red gradient to their overall image. Uh, if you don't want to mess the opacity, if you like the rich colors, but you still don't want it as rich as it is on default, another way you can adjust it is go to adjustments. Let's go ahead and apply a curves layer adjustment. I'm going to go ahead and clip it to this. And it's either um, on Mac, Option, on PC, Control. And you can just clip it when you have your, curse, uh, your mouse between the two layers. So now if I make this adjustment, it's only affecting the color gradient. So you can tweak this. Instead of just lowering their opacity, it gives you a different way to controlling the color um, gradient map. Now let's say you didn't want to apply an overall one, but you wanted to maybe shift the colors over skin. So I'm going to go ahead and remove these three layers and I'm apply brown. Maybe that's not the one I want, so let me try it again. So maybe I like this this as our skin tone a little bit better. I can inverse this mask and just go back and paint it over her skin. Now I'm going to do a really rough job. Uh, I like the way it changes her hair color a little bit. And I see it bleeding a little bit. Uh, I will clean that up. All right, so all I did is painting in white what, where I want this color gradient map to go through. Uh, now let's go ahead and apply an overall gradient to the image. I have this other preset made. Uh, that popular teal orange look that a lot of people like. Now this may not work exactly how you envision, but this is essentially getting the essence of those colors to apply to your image. Now every image is going to be a little bit different if you shot it a darker image, of course, these colors are going to affect the image differently. So let's tweak this a bit. So maybe I like these, this little setting. I'm going to group those together so I can turn it on off. And then there's her skin tone. And then one of the other updates is the way that the file or the gradient map is named. As you can see, it says MBP color map X slash red. And then this one is teal. So whatever your name on the presets are now applies to your la layers. So that way you can go back and know which palette it was that you selected and used. Now another option, if I go back to this menu, is you can actually shift the colors. And that's going to go back to that preference I showed you earlier where we had a 10. So it's going to shift it up or down uh, by 10, the value of 10. You can also add these colors to swatches. And you can also have black and white protection on. So what that does is it's going to protect your blacks and whites in your image. So it's not going to apply the color gradient over that. So if you have a mostly white background, you don't want to apply a red tone to that. You want to keep it white. You can keep that on. You can turn it off. Or you can save this as a preset. Um, so let me go ahead and maybe bring that down to six. Analyze. There's my rose file. So I extracted the six color palettes now. I uh, can apply this as a preset. Call it red petals. Now it's up here. You can resort this if you want. So let's pretend I want to keep all my reds together. So I'll drag that down. Um, I'm going to go ahead and click on group. Let's pretend I'm done with this image. I'll go ahead and keep this open so I can save this so I can have it on the full write up. You can slide between. Let's go ahead and select another image. Go ahead and select this car. You may have seen this image before in my review of Lumizone. Uh, I've extracted the color gradient map once again. Any additional color tonings I applied, I've removed all that. And if you wanted to grab the purple from this car, previously you would have to 
manually crop out the image. Now with this new update, I can make a selection to grab the source from. So I'm going to switch to document and I'm just going to show you. So analyze is going to select color from the whole image. Now, like I said previously, I would have to maybe if I wanted the color from this area, I would have to select that, crop it, and then either use it as a file or have it open in a window and analyze from there. But now with the update selections, you can actually extract colors from your selections. So if I click analyze, it's only going to extract the purples from this area. So let's go back here and let's just see what it looks like. So let's just see what it looks like if I do a curves adjustment layer. I'm going to clip that. And maybe I'll reduce it a little bit as well. Actually, reduce the gradient map itself. I'm going to group those two together, turn it on and off. So maybe I like this, so I can keep that alone. I'll go back to the car shot. Now a great thing too is it doesn't have to just be your rectangle or square marquee. You can get your lasso. You can draw anywhere you want. Maybe I want to go ahead and add this yellow and black. And I can do analyze there. As you can see, it grabbed from both sources. And a great thing with this tool is there's no limit of where and how you want to apply these color gradient maps. I can apply it back to the same image if I want. Of course, I need to deselect, so I'm going to undo. Actually, I'll just delete that. Make sure everything's deselected and apply my color gradient. So like I said earlier, it depends on the values of your image and the color extraction may not apply exactly how you think it's going to so you will have to do some fine tuning and this is a good case where it makes the overall image really dark so maybe I just wanted the paint to be darker and I'm just gonna do a quick example it's not gonna be the best selection All right, so let's see what that looks like now. Actually, let me add this as a selection. All right, so once it's done, go ahead and apply. And that way it's just shifting the values of the car itself. So on, off. So maybe I just want to affect the background. Uh, let's try orange and teal. And go ahead and copy that map. And what I did is uh, shift alt on a Mac on PC B shift actually on PC will be shift alt on Mac it's shift option so what it did is copy it over and inversed it so I can go back and erase the tire erase that maybe drop it down a little bit so now you can see the the gravel especially is it has a little bit more of a orange brown tint to it All right, so let's go ahead and try another example. So here's a shot I did uh, with model Maggie. Um, maybe I really love the skin tones 
Nino did on the shot with Josie. If I open that up, I can select her skin tones. Make sure the dress is not selected. Go ahead and analyze that. Go ahead and save this. So, and if you want to edit this, you can always edit the colors itself. So if I right click on the color swatch, I can edit, shift, add to swatches, duplicate, delete. Um, just go ahead and delete that color. So if I go back to the Maggie shot, apply that. And once again, I can just invert that mask and apply it to her skin. Once again, this is just going to be a really rough mask. Now the orange skin is a little too vibrant for my taste. So once again, I can always adjust it with the curves adjustment or just lower the values. strap so that skin is not missed out so maybe I like it at 25 off on so you can see her skin now has a little bit more of a tanned look to it so there's a lot of different ways to do that now some of the other updates in this version, besides being able to analyze and using the magic, however you want to make a selection, you can now use that selection instead of the whole image. You can extract that. Uh, you can also change your default blending modes and opacity settings. Uh, you can now output the gradient maps from the plugin with its name. So as you see here, Josie Skin is the new preset I've created. Now you can shift the, uh, you can change the threshold of the color shift. You can sort by luminance. So those are the key updates besides also getting a minor performance and speed increase. Uh, this is a great tool for extracting colors, like I said earlier. But one of the features that I find missing is the ability to extract these presets. Let's say you really wanted this preset from me. Um, there's no way to extract it. So right now, I think the best way to share presets, if I go back to open, of course, this is the color palette from Nina Batista's website. Maybe I that one dress palette I really like. I can just highlight and then analyze that. So both of them are set at six. So now I have that color palette or that preset. So this is one way to get around sharing presets. Another thing that I personally would like would be the ability to group these together. Now let's say red browns, browns two, uh, Josie skin, maybe I want to group these together and in a folder called um, skin tones. And then maybe I have another one for backgrounds, maybe I have another one for um, cars. There's different ways that I would like to organize my presets instead of having just building, building, building in here. Um, I guess another option would be to create your own just little panels. Maybe you have, um, you just make these, I could fucking screenshot this. And I just save this little um, screenshot as my skin tones palette. And I just create and save them all to one file instead of doing the grouping in here. So that way I can just open that one image just like this and say, well, let me try this skin tone range. Maybe 
let's try the skin tone range and apply it. I would like to be a little bit more organized within the panel itself, but maybe it's with uh, how many presets you do it may slow it down. I'm not exactly sure. So those are the two suggestions I have currently. I really like the update. Let me see. So let's just play around with a few different images. Let's see how it analyzes this. So the image is mostly green. Maybe if I wanted to focus more on the red, uh, the pinks, reanalyze that. And then I can just go back and delete those colors. So maybe I only wanted those three shades of pink. So there has it. I kept the selection on, so I just had to go back and paint that away. Or if I want it for the whole image, I'm just going to select that map. And there you go. It applied pink palette to the entire image. One other suggestion I have would be a quicker option to apply these gradients instead of having to do two clicks. So I have to click the three little dots and then click apply. Maybe there'll be a, a play button or another kind of icon here. So if I wanted to apply it, I can just click it real fast and then go back for any of these other ones to keep them in that um, collapsible menu. So let's go ahead and try out another example. Um, see what the shot is. So maybe I want a little bit richer tones. Go ahead and clip that back down. Not sure what's going on with the image, but it's all pixelated there. I guess it looks like it was a bad transfer. So this is a great tool for extracting colors from pretty much anywhere you can envision. Uh, just take out your phone, take a snap of a, a flower bed, um, or you can grab from your previous images. You can essentially extract those essence, the essence of those colors, and apply it to any image in any way you want it with these adjustments. So let me go ahead and change the default just to show you. Put that at 40%. Turn this one off, apply red. So you can see it comes in at across as 40%. So if you find yourself using 40, 30, 25 majority of the time, and if you don't wanna do the curves adjustment method, you can definitely set your preference for that. You can always change your uh, blending modes as well. So the other option was vivid light. Let me just double check. I think it was actually linear light and overlay. All right, so put that back at soft light. So let me go back to overlay and linear light. But you can always shift it to anyone you like me based on your preference. So you can see this, it kind of muted the greens a lot, um, but that's, that's another great way to use it. Let's go back to this picture. Maybe I wanted to give it a black and white look. Let me go ahead and close that one out. Don't save. Um, file, analyze, white, open that. All right, so here I have the black and white gradient map now. I'll go ahead and click apply. Of course, it defaults to me soft light and 40%. Let me kick that up. Now let's go ahead and change the mode. So there's saturation and then there's normal. You can see which one you like better, uh, but pretty much changed the colored image into a black and white version pretty easily. Once again, if you like this plugin, you can always head to ninobatista.com to 
purchase your copy. It is currently $30. Now you can also use my discount code. I posted it up on my Instagram. I'm just going to open that. So my code is AlexV015. And you use that for, I believe, 15% off of any of the plugins that Nino is currently offering. Now I am, uh, full disclosure, I am one of the ambassadors of Nino Batista's plugin Retouch Tools, uh, but I do not get any kickbacks from this discount code or anything like that. I just really love his panels and pretty much the only tools I'm using uh, in my workflow. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. If you want to see more reviews, if you want to see more behind the scenes, what exactly you would like to see more of in my channel. Uh, thank you.